Good morning. My name is Melissa O'Brien, and I represent West Cobb Advocate. Members who participate in our Facebook page are overwhelmingly in opposition to Other Business 80. <coughs> it is no secret that since the economy has picked up that developers have seen West Cobb as a cash cow for development. We have stood before you numerous times asking you to scale back the size and scope of developments because of the sheer volume of requests inundating our community with traffic and the loss of our quality of life. You as a collective board cannot continue to look at each individual rezoning application as if it were in a vacuum. That is why a comprehensive land use plan exists and why it is not merely a guide, as we've been told by our commissioner, but rather a roadmap for responsible development. The residents of this community have a growing discontent for the lack of adherence to a comprehensive land use plan and Cobb County Code. For years, we the people have used what is our only reference point when purchasing property to assist us in our home buying decisions. The land use plan and zoning designations are a fundamental tool we use when purchasing property in this county. The residents of Garrison Ridge, Heritage Oaks, and Chestnut Ridge did, did just that. They looked to see what it was zoned around them before making a decision about where to purchase their home, for most of them their primary investment. To ignore the text amendment that was placed on this parcel and dramatically upzone is denying existing homeowners their constitutional rights. It dramatically changes the character and keeping of their community, the financial and, mo and emotional incentive for purchasing their homes and wanting to reside in Cobb County. This board cannot continue to ignore the rights of existing property owners merely because each individual owner does not have the financial ability or the will to fight litigation. It is your job to protect the citizens of this county, and your tools exist in the form of code and the land use plan. Let's look at both sides, too. Mr. Collins has made a decision to buy land that was zoned residential. No one disputes his right to build on his land as zoned. Commissioner Weatherford in mediation removed the more appropriate residential senior living component. Mr. Collins' decision to purchase residential land that is largely granite was his financial speculation and his alone. When the proposed text amendment capped the commercial note adjacent to his property, we were unable to find any letters in opposition from Mr. Collins from the proposed change. Now we are expected to believe that Mr. Collins' property rights are more, have more value than the rights of adjacent homeowners, that the land use plan does not apply to Mr. Collins. Since when is it the county's job to ensure the homeowner's highest price for their land? Why is it that co the county can spend thousands of dollars on taxpayer money creating a land use plan and that in order to ensure the county upholds it, the general public has to hire an attorney? Why can't the county spend our taxpayer dollars devising what it calls a mediated settlement that does not allow the adjacent homeowners to be present to state their case and ultimately deliver a plan that benefits both the developer and Mr. Collins and still harms the quality of life and the value of the property of the adjacent homeowners, including a variance that, that allows a code that to a code to allow developments on Sunday. I did research about automobile oriented neighborhoods. Columbia, property likes, Columbia Properties likes to tout that commercial developments benefit adjacent landowners, but it actually depends on the type of business and the type of neighborhood. In fact, commercial properties do better in areas where mass transit exists. We have none on Dallas Highway. They also do better where there is no, not long stretches of sidewalks and two-lane highways. <coughs> Further, while high-end improves home values, that is not the product that Columbia Property delivers. That is what they promised our community two years ago, but what we received were off-priced retailers. The truth is the type of commercial pockets the upscale, upscale lifestyle centers Columbia Properties promised to create is not realistic in our community. We don't have the demographic for it, and the way our community is spread out is not conducive for it. In fact, we don't need it, as was proven on Black Friday, when both the avenues and the Target shopping centers were less than active. So the question is, whose side are you on? Are you here to uphold the county's land use plan and codes and the property values and the quality of life for the 274 adjacent property owners, or are you siding with the developers once again? 
We have been told by our commissioner that he must follow the law. So let's do that if it means the county challenges this in court. We have the land use plan and the code, which clearly states this type of de where this type of de development should go. If we don't have that, then how can anyone purchase land with confidence in Cobb County anymore? And why have rezoning? If this board is not the final arbitrator, then let's change the process so everyone can understand the end game. The citizens of West Cobb are ready for you to stand up for the land use plan and for the rights of existing residents. We, the taxpayers of Cobb County, want you to spend our tax dollars to defend the land use plan and to protect our quality of life. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 